If you've watched the new recent few videos from Iman Gatsi, you may have noticed that his editing style has changed. His style went from these kind of edits with the low frame rate glitchy kind of look to these type of edits and there's definitely a big difference. And in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can edit like his new style and specifically how I recreated this edit from one of his recent YouTube videos in Adobe After Effects. Also, if you are a beginner or intermediate video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video editing product skill cut through the top link in the description below. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to name mine new Eman tutorial. And for this one, I actually don't have any assets because all of the um, required things to create this um, edit is already inbuilt into After Effects. So I'm actually going to start off by getting the text tool and I'm going to type up $1,000 with the dollar sign and the comma after the one. And I'm gonna change the font to Arial Black. Then I'm gonna make this text into like an outline instead of a solid object. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to uncheck the fill and check the stroke. And the width is going to be three pixels. I'm then going to center it and the color for this is also gonna be white. I'm then gonna search up in the effects and presets gradient ramp and I'm gonna apply this onto the text. And I'm going to try and create a like fade out almost thing. So the start color is going to be white and that's going to be at the top of the uh, 1000 text. And then the, sec the second color is going to be black and that's going to be at the bottom. So it'll look like the text will fade out near the bottom. And now I'm happy with that. I'm just going to search up the effects and presets glow and I'll add that onto the text as well. I'm just going to slightly decrease the glow threshold and I'm going to increase the glow, glow radius to like 50, 40. And I'll decrease the intensity to like 0.3. And this is what we've got now. I'm then going to get the text and I'm going to type up first and I'm going to change the font to Montserrat Black. Then I'm going to highlight the text and I'll make it a solid object again. So I'll check the fill and uncheck the stroke. And the color is going to be a slightly grayer version of white. Then I'm going to increase the scale of it and I'm going to position it where I want it to be, which is on the left side of the um, 1000 text. But I'll play around with the size and position a bit as well. And when I'm happy with it, I'm then going to get the text to on and I'm going to type up the third bit, which is step. I'll change the font to Montserrat Ultra Light. So then there's a big difference between the first and then the step text as well, like in the original video. Then I'm just going to increase it to so then it's the same size as the first text. So 178%. And then I'm going to position it where I want it to be. And now I'm happy with that. I'm going to add a gradient ramp effect onto the first and step text as well. So I'll add it onto the first, I'll swap colors, I'll make the uh, first color here and the second color here. And it's not going to be like right near the bottom because I don't want it to be an intense gradient like the first one. It's just going to be a very light, subtle gradient. And I'll do the same thing with the step text as well. So I'll add it onto the step. Then when I'm happy with that, I'm also going to highlight all of them and I'm going to press P. Then I'm going to keyframe the position at the start. Then I'm going to go forward by like five frames and then I'll add another uh, position keyframe. Then I'll go back to the original one and then I'll move all of them up a bit as well. Then I I'm going to highlight all of the keyframes I've made. I'll press F9. I'll go into the graph editor and I'm going to adjust the graph slightly a bit as well like this. Now I'm happy with that movement. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to add an opacity fade, fade in. So I'm going to highlight all of the layers. I'll press T. I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% at the start. Then I'll go forward by like five frames again and I'll make the opacity 100%. And as you can see now, they all come in like so. Now I'm gonna slightly adjust the graph as well. So I'm just gonna highlight all the keyframes again. I'll go back into the graph editor and I'm just gonna adjust the graph so and then it starts off a bit steeper at the start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate all of the layers. So in the original video, it didn't like they didn't come in all together. So it went the first text first, then it went the 1000, then the step. So they come in like really close together. It goes like first 1000 step, like really fast. But I'm going to do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward by like five frames. Then I'll move the 1000 text like five frames forward. Then I'm going to go five frames from that point. So 10 frames forward and I'll move the step text there as well. And actually I'm just going to move the layers. So and then they're three uh, forward instead. I shall keep, I'll just play around with them a bit. I'll make it about three. Uh, yeah, so three forward from each other. And as you can see, now we've got this, which is what it was in the original video. And now I'm happy with this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all of the layers and I'm going to pre-compose them and I'll name it first. And now they're all like pre-composed together, which means we can like move the whole layer and all, all of this, like what we've just created will like be linked together. Now I'm actually going to start on the line at the bottom. So I'm going to go up to the pen tool and I'm just going to like go out. So, and then it's like, we can make it longer than the actual like screen. So, and then I'm going to add a point, then I'm going to hold shift. And then I'm going to add, add, add another point. So now, as you can see, the line's like way bigger than the original screen, which means that when we move it, there will be like a line outside the screen. So when we move it from um, 
left from right to left there will be like more line to move if you know what i mean i'm just gonna adjust the stroke a bit as well i'll make it like four and i'll make the color like a slightly gray version like this actually i'll make it five instead of four now i'm actually gonna make the line like come from right to left and like come onto screen like it did at the start of the original video so i'm just gonna move the line so and then like the, the left part of it is just here so it doesn't go so all of the line is now on the right side of the screen and I'm going to position it where I want it to like be fully transitioned in. Then I'm going to go back to the start and I'm just going to move it over to the right. So then it just starts like right off screen like so. And as you can see now, it comes from the right side of the screen to the left. And now we have two keyframes. I'll highlight these keyframes. I'll press F9. I'll go into the graph editor and I'll create a steep peak in the middle like so. So as you can see now, it comes in fast and quite smooth, but I'll make it come even faster by moving the right uh, keyframe over to the left. And now I'm happy with this. I'm actually going to create the like red glowing line, which is over the um, gray line. So I'm going to get the pen tool again, and I'm just going to get a point around here. Then I'll hold shift and then I'll create another point like a bit over here to create a line. Then I'll turn off the fill and I'll make the stroke color red. And then I'll also increase the stroke of it as well. So it's slightly bigger than the original line underneath it. Then I'm just going to position it so and then it's perfectly in the middle of the grey line behind it. And I'm also just going to lengthen it a bit as well because it's like quite short compared to what it was in the original video. Then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets glow and I'm going to add this onto that red line. I'll increase the radius a bit as well. Then I'm actually going to animate this red line. So I'm going to go to the start and I'm just going to open up this arrow. Then I'm going to click on add and I'll add trim paths. Then I'll open up trim paths. I'll keyframe the end at 0% at the start. Then I'll go forward to by around a second and I'll make the end 100%. Then with these two keyframes, I'll highlight them. I'll press F9. I'll go back into the graph editor to create another steep peak in the middle like I did earlier. And as you can see now, it comes in quite smooth, but I'll space out the keyframes a bit as well. And actually I'm going to make it so and then they start one point forward, like one frame forward from the start. And actually I'm going to make the original gray line come in a bit faster as well. Then I'm going to move this first composition up to the top and I'm going to decrease the scale of it. So and then it's how, how big it was in the original video and I'll position it so it's right over the red line. Now I'm going to go to the point where the uh, red line has fully uh, transitioned in like that keyframe and I'm going to press command shift D or control shift D to cut the um, original gray line. And now I'm going to link everything like from now on, I'm going to link things to that second layer. So instead of shape layer one, it's now shape layer three. And it's like basically the second like layer of that original gray line. But before I start linking things, I'm just going to move this first composition a bit forward in time. And now I'm actually going to move the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe when I want the uh, like the line to move. And I'll add a keyframe onto that like new layer of the line. It's around two seconds in. And then I'm going to go forward by around a second or so. And I'll make another keyframe. And then I'm going to pick whip or link this first composition to shape layer three or the new like version of that gray line. And that means whatever we do to this gray line, we will now like track the first composition will track onto that. So now at that second like position keyframe we've just made, I'm now gonna move the line. So, and then it goes from right to left. So I'm going to move it. So, and then now as you can see the actual 1000 text is being tracked with it. So, and then we're gonna move it all the way. So, and then the um, 1000 text is on the left side of the screen. Then I'm going to highlight these keyframes and I'm just going to adjust the graph. So I'm just going to create a steep peak in the middle with this, like the keyframes for the line. And when we play this back, as you can see, like the line will move, but that's not really what you notice. You notice the actual like 1000 composition moving from um, right to left. And actually I'm going to move this. So, and then it just like, it comes right when there's the cut. So, and then there isn't much of a pause between when the first movement happens and then the second movement. But if you look at the original video, you'll see that the actual like red line moves as well. So I'm going to go to this same point around one second in and I'm going to then like keyframe the position of the red line. And then I'm going to go to the point where the uh, gray line stops moving and I'm going to then make the red line in the middle. I can align it or I can move it. I'm just going to align it. Then I'm going to highlight all four of these keyframes. And this will means that it will reset like the graph we've just made. But it means that now we can move them together. So and then they move at the same rate. So I'm going to highlight them. And then I'm going to also highlight the graph like so. And then this means that when I create a steep peak in the middle, like I'm doing now, all of the layer, both of the layers will move together. So now, as you can see, like they're moving together. So basically the 1000 text and the line is moving to the left and the uh, 
I guess, red line is moving to the middle or the right. So this is exactly what was in the original video. But I'm just going to slightly edit the graph of it as well. So I'm going to highlight these layers and I'm just going to make the um, line, the graph, just a bit less steep because the movement is quite like sharp. So yeah, this is what it was like in the original video. And I'm happy with that. I'm then going to create the second like text because in the original video, it would now move on to like the 10,000 second step part. So what I'm going to do to create that is I'm going to double click on the first composition and I'm not going to make it all again. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight these. I'm going to press control D or command D to duplicate them. I'm then going to press pre-compose and I'm going to name this pre-composition second. Then I'm going to turn off the visibility of this like new composition and I'm going to double click on it. And this means we basically just duplicated what we just made, but in a separate composition. Then I'm going to edit this text. So, and then it says 10,000 instead of 1000. And now just, this is when things get a bit weird. So what you want to do is basically whenever we're going to move all of the actual like text layers and everything. So, and then they're actually like in the right position. But the thing is when now we've already got cre we've already made keyframes for this like whenever we duplicate this composition which we're going to do again after this as well to create the third step what it's going to do is it's already got cre it's already got uh, pre-made keyframes but those pre-made keyframes are for this text meaning we're going to have to like change the keyframes a bit which means that whenever we move the keyframes we need to be aligned with the second keyframe or like one of the keyframes so then it doesn't create a third one so we need to be aligned with like the second keyframe of whatever, like if that's the 10,000 or the step, step two or the first or whatever, we need to make it, we need to be aligned with the second keyframe. When we, whatever, whenever we move this keyframe, we need to move the first one as well. So, and then like, basically if we just randomly move it, it will create a third keyframe. So we need to make sure we're actually aligned with them and the numbers need to be exact or you'll have a weird movement. So, uh, because if you look at it, they all move down and we want it to just move down. We want, we don't want it to move diagonally which means that when we move the actual text like left to right to position it, uh, we need to be aligned with that keyframe. And then we need to copy that number from the left one, which is the left or right one. And then we need to apply that onto the first one as well. So you'll see what I mean in a sec. I might've explained that really badly, but you'll see what I mean in a sec. So I'm going to move this uh, 10,000 text to the middle. And as you can see, what I need to do is I now need to copy that first like number from the middle and I need to apply it onto the first keyframe as well which means that now it will just move down properly. So now that's in the middle and then that will move down like that. So I need to change the first text. So now it says second. Uh, but I also, that's in a really bad spot. So I need to move that over to the left while being over the second keyframe. But I need to make sure the first number for the um, first keyframe and then the first number for the second keyframe are the same. So I'm just going to make that first keyframe, like the first number for that first keyframe, the same as the second one. And this is what we need to do every time. So I'm just going to move the step text over to the right. And I'm just going to actually position it a bit more to the left, actually. And I'm going to move the second text. So and then it is now a bit over to the left. So and then they're kind of like there's space for each other. We don't want to be, we kind of want there to be space for both the second and the step text. But as you can see, it now moves diagonally. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to make sure the first number for the first keyframe is the same as the first number for the second. If you've done that right now, all of them should move down without any diagonal stuff. And the text should say 10,000 second step instead of 1,000 first step. And now I've done that. I'm going to go back to the original composition and I'm just going to apply this second composition onto the composition. I'm, the, I'm just going to scale it down though and I'm going to make it the same size as the first composition. And then I'm going to move it so and then it's now over the red one. And I'm going to pick whip or link the second composition to shape layer three as well like we did for the other one. And this means now it will, the um, actual 10,000 second step text will uh, move left with the line as well but we'll just move the whole composition a bit forward in time as well. So, and then it starts when it should start, which is like this. And now I want a very small break between the second like composition and then the third one, which is the, uh, the 100,000 one. So I'm just going to copy the keyframes for the, like the line, the red line and the white line. I'm just going to copy them and paste them like a couple frames forward. So now there's like a tiny like break Then I'm going to go forward from this uh, like copied keyframe and I'm just going to move the line. So, and then now the 10,000 second step is in the left part of the screen and the first like composition can't even be seen anymore. Then I'm just going to edit the graph we just made, like the new keyframes. And I'm just going to make it so that there's a steep peak in the middle. 
So there is now a completely new movement and the 10,000 second step is on the left side of the screen. And now what we need to do is we're not going to move the red line because in the original video, the red line stops moving then and it just stayed in the middle. So now I'm going to make the third composition. So I'm going to double click on the second one, highlight the layers, press control D or to duplicate, pre-compose, and then I'll name it third. Then I'm going to double click on that third composition change the number to 100,000, I'll center it, I'll make sure the start number is the same for both of them, then I'll change the text so and then it says third, we'll basically just do exactly what we did earlier but for this one it will say third step instead of a uh, second, but then now I'm going to position the third and the step so and then they are like roughly in the middle like this, but now I'm just going to change the position of the third and the step text, but obviously I need to do what I did earlier so and then they don't actually like move diagonally, and if you've done that right all of them should move down straight and it should say 100,000 third step. Now I'm happy with that, I'm going to go back into the original composition and I'm going to add the third composition onto the uh, timeline. I'm also going to scale it down so and then it's the same size as the other ones and I'm going to position it so and then it's in the middle over the red line. And I'm going to link it to shape layer 3 or the uh, grey line as well. So as you can see now it will follow the rest of the numbers going from right to left and it'll be tracked onto the line. But I'm just going to move the position of the composition so when it starts when it should start. And we are almost done now, there's just a few more things to do. I'm just going to adjust the keyframes so and then it starts a bit sooner. And then I'm going to get the text and I'm going to type up your current stage. But I'm going to make it so and then the all of the layers are separated so and then there's the your, then current, then stage all in separate like layers so and then they can all move down and transition like it did in the original video. So I'm going to add the your one, I'm going to change the font to Bradley Hand. I can't get the exact font he used because I don't find I don't see the point in finding the exact font. The main thing of this video is showing you how to actually do the actual editing, not just finding the fonts. So I'm happy with this font. It's I'm pretty sure it's built into After Effects. Then I'm just going to position it where I want it to be. Then I'm going to duplicate it and I'll move this one over to the right. I'll change this one to current. Then I'll duplicate the current one and I'll move that one over to the right and I'll change it to stage. Then I'm going to move them so and then they're all of equal distance away from each other. And I'm just going to stretch it so and then the text is like a bit taller. Then I'm going to highlight all of the layers and I'm going to position it so and then it's underneath the middle of the red line like so. Then I'm actually going to make the text transition in. So I'm going to highlight all three of these words. I'll keyframe the position at the start, then I'll go forward by like 10 frames and I'll add another position keyframe, then I'll move all of them up, then I've got these uh, six keyframes, I'll highlight them, press F9, I'll go into the graph editor to play around with the graph and I'm going to do this with the graph. There's a peak in the middle, it's not so steep but there is a peak in the middle. Then I'm going to make the uh, opacities fade in as well, so I'll keyframe the opacity at all of them at the, zero, at the start at zero, then I'll go forward by like 10 frames again, or 8 frames actually, and I'll make it 100% and now they will fade in, but now I'm going to space out all of the layers, so I'll go forward by like three frames each time, and I'll just space the word so it says your current stage. Actually that's not really enough, so I will move them forward by like four frames, five frames, and then your current stage comes in like it did in the original video, and now I'm happy with that, I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'll just move the whole thing a bit forward in time. And now I've got to actually link this text to the line, so I'm going to highlight all three of these layers, and I'll pick whip it, to shape layer three like I've done like three times in this video. So I'll just do that and then now it will track with the line and it will follow underneath the 1000 first step composition. And actually now I think about it, one of the last things I want to do is I want to make it so and then the, um, so there is a bigger gap between when it goes from 10,000 to 100,000. So what I want to do is I'm just going to get the shape layer three keyframes, like the, the last two, and I'm just going to move them a bit further, like maybe 10 frames forward. And then I'm going to get the third like composition and I'll also move that 10 frames forward as well. So now there should be a bigger pause from where it goes 10,000 to 100,000. And we're pretty much done with the edit. Now I'm going to actually like apply it onto something to show what this would look like. And I'm also going to add like a final animation as well, like a very final simple step to make this exactly like it was in the original video. So I'm going to create a new composition and I'm just going to name it Eman. And I'm going to apply this picture of um, Iman Gatsi in the video that he was in. It's not a video, but it's just this picture. And it's a random point in the same video. And I'm just going to scale it up so it fits the rest of the composition. It's just to make it feel like actually show what it was like if it's actually in a video. And I'm just going to apply the original um, Iman, like new Iman tutorial composition, which is like the original composition 
over this uh, screenshot. And as you can see, it's now applied over the bottom of that picture. But the thing is, when you go back to the original video, you'll see that the whole like bottom of the screen gets darker to like, I guess, to show like to move the focus over to that part of the um, screen. There's like it gets darker the bottom bit. And to create that, we're going to get the, um, the rectangle tool and we're going to create a rectangle over the actual um, like bottom part of the screen. I'll turn down the stroke and I'll make the fill color black. And I'll add the fast box blur effect onto this uh, shape layer. I'll increase the blur radius. And as you can see, now it's not a solid object anymore. It's now just like a, a dark blur, I guess. And I'm going to move this below the new Eman tutorial. And I'll move the new Eman tutorial a bit forward in time. I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% of this new shape layer. And then I'll go forward by like a second and I'll make it 70%. I shall make it 80%. And if I play this back, as you can see, it now gets like slowly darker at the start. And actually, I've just realized in the original video, the actual sh uh, composition, the original composition is like comes in at the same time as the actual um, original shape layer. I thought there was this like second where the um, the shape layer comes in, then the actual animation or like edit comes in. But no, they come in like right at the start at the same time. So I'll just move it. So and then it starts right at the start. And actually, I'm just going to play around with the um, blur radius. I'll make it like 400. So and then it the um, actual like darkness is like more dark, I guess, and it's not so um, spread it out because that's what it was in the original video. And now I've done that. This is the finished edit. Just a quick reminder about skill cut. If you are a video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out skill cut through the top link in the description below.